Hi, this is attorney Michael Pariente of the Pariente Law Firm PC, John G. Watkins of Counsel. I'm a criminal defense lawyer here in Las Vegas. I've been practicing law for nearly 18 years in the area of criminal law. And today I'd like to talk to you from the Howard Hughes Center in my conference room about the issue of prosecutorial misconduct and specifically something called prosecutorial vindictiveness. Let's talk about prosecutorial vindictiveness, what it is and what it is not. Here's an example of where it would not be found by a court. Let's say that you're being represented by an attorney and you're being offered by the prosecutor to plead guilty to a misdemeanor. Let's say that you decide you want to reject the misdemeanor and you insist on your right to a trial, which you have every right to do. The prosecutor could turn around and file felony charges where appropriate. That's typical in a situation where the prosecutor is charging you with, say, embezzlement and he decides to offer you a misdemeanor theft, which you reject. The prosecutor could say, fine, we're going to file felony charges for embezzlement if, in fact, they do have a basis to do so, if there's probable cause to do so on each element. In that situation, the prosecutor is not not committing vindictiveness, even though it may feel that way, because the prosecutor does have a right to tell you that since you're asserting your right to trial, the prosecutor can file more serious charges. And they typically do that. And that is not prosecutorial vindictiveness. Now, what about an example of where there is prosecutorial vindictiveness? Let's say there's a situation where you have an attorney representing you and your attorney is claiming that there was a search warrant that was it submitted uh, and it was executed by a judge, but the search warrant is flawed. Let's say it contains material omissions or material misstatements of fact. And let's say the judge dismisses the case, or in this case he grants the motion to suppress and finds that in fact there was a Fourth Amendment violation and throws the evidence out. Now at that point, let's say the prosecutor decides to file new charges in front of a different court based on the same set of facts and dismisses your case in the first court that you were in. That is an example of what's called forum shopping, where a prosecutor doesn't like the fact that one judge has thrown the evidence out and then the prosecutor decides, fine, I'm just going to dismiss the case and file new charges in a different court. That's called forum shopping. That is an example also of the prosecutor, prosecutorial vindictiveness, where the prosecutor is basically doesn't like the ruling and is forum shopping and going to another court to file new charges based on the same evidence. That's a situation where you can argue that the prosecutor is guilty of prosecutorial misconduct. It may in fact be the basis of your charges being dismissed. So if you are being charged with any type of crime and you do feel that the prosecutor has overreached and you're wondering if you have a situation where you're the victim of prosecutorial misconduct, give us a call. We're more than happy to talk to you in person or if you're out of state, let's talk over the phone about how we can help you.